Hello and welcome to the Pursuit Rooted Podcast. I am Joseph Johnson and this is my lovely wife, Samantha. And we are the pastors of Pursuit Young Adults Ministry here at Richmond House of Prayer. We meet the first and third Sundays of each month at 6 p.m. at the church, typically. Sometimes we go out and meet other places. But we want to invite you to come out and join us. Um, we're in our sermon series right now over the Lordship of Christ. And if you're getting the sermons and not the podcast, you're only getting part of it. I, I say that every single time because we... We create these to go hand in hand. So we want to invite you out to join us. Last week we talked about the fear of the Lord. And this week we're talking about... The favor of God versus the favor of man. The favor of God versus the favor of man and how that plays into lordship. Mm -hmm. So kick it off, hon. Okay. Well, like the the key verse here when you're talking about favor of God versus favor of man, what's the verse that you think about? You can't be cheating. (laughs) See your notes. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin Uh, eater. Um... I don't know. I, okay. I, I there's a couple of there's a John five forty four like where Jesus is like, hey, you guys just want honor. I was for gonna man. say Luke two fifty two and is. Jesus increased <laughs> yeah. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. That's not what people think when they think of fa- that's not the verse that people go to. Okay, if we're talking about favor of God versus favor of man, I feel like that's pretty. That's not the verse people cherry pick to get favor. No, that's not the that's one. Not, I'm not even talking about favor. Oh my <laughs> word. <sighs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Anywho. Well, Samuel also grew in favor. That was a verse. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll shut up. <laughs> Luke two fifty two. Uh huh. Already, already read it. It's Take fine. Take it away, babe. So what is favor? So favor is a special preference or privilege that gives someone an advantage over others. So if that's normal favor, what do you think divine favor is? Oh, what's the word? Do you have the word for favor in Hebrew? Did you? I'm sorry, slacker here. I know. I was just no. I was just curious of if you if like if you had um, had that on hand. But I think when I see favor in Scripture, it's always for a purpose. Like it's it's to um, enable and promote God's purposes and plans. Okay, that's pretty good. It refers to God's support, approval, or preference for his people that sets them in a position of advantage okay so as children of god is divine favor our heritage um our heritage as rooted in the history of god's people yes but we have an even greater covenant now than what they had in the old covenant thankfully so i i don't look at my favor now my favor now isn't associated to blessings and curses. Okay. As the as like the old covenant old law was. All right, so let's break it down a little bit. Well, let's start with favor of man. So, we said that favor is like a special preference or or privilege, right? Mm-hmm. So, let's think about some examples of that in the Bible. Okay. I was just over here thinking about like No, I was just I was just thinking about like if you were to ask me how do you get favor with man, like what my answers were going to be. <laughs> well, please share now. Well, no, I, I don't. I don't know. It, it may. It may come. That out. was one of my questions. Oh, what is it? What does it look like to have favor with man? Well, no, I don't want to jump ahead. I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll just. I'll, be, I'll just table it here. Maybe try to like censor it a little bit too. But <laughs> okay. Um. So. <laughs> wow. So example uh, I was thinking about is like with Daniel. Okay. Okay, so he trusted God and he spoke out to not devi- defile defile himself. So in Daniel 1 and 9, it says, because of this, God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. Um, so he didn't conform to this world, but he stood up for what he knew to be truth and righteousness, no matter the cost. And because of that, mm-hmm. he gained favor with man, it said. Okay, so then let's talk about, let's unpack that scene the the eunuchs, the chief of the eunuchs was like, um, I'll let you, you know, not eat the king's diet, and you can eat the meat, and you can or you can eat the vegetables, and um, so he gave him favor there, but also it sounds as though like in his preparation and in his position, he became someone that that stood out. Like he he became Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, which they're the, they're Babylonian names, but. Uh, those three, but before, even before they, I want to say, became Babylonians, like they were standing out. God was, 
God was purposefully putting them, putting the spotlight on them, so to speak. But he was putting the spotlight on them and then he was turning the hearts of the people in a way that would give them an advantage, that would raise them up. That's what I see in the story of Daniel. Okay. So this brings me to another question when it comes to the favor of man. Okay. I was listening to a podcast the other day, ironically, as we record a podcast. Uh-huh. Um, and it, it, it made me question this. And so is being elevated or, a pro- or promoted, like in an earthly sense, is that a reason to believe that someone has favor on their life? That's a good question. Um, that's a good question because of the way you phrased it. Because we've seen p- plenty of people rise in like promotion or elevation <coughs> mm-hmm. due to favor of man, but maybe they ne- they have fallen because they they may have had favor of man, but then but not favor of God. I see your I wheels see, turning. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of trying to think of what area I want to attack this from. Um, you have to have both favor of God and favor of man. Like that's the thing is that if when God when God gives you a calling, a ministry, a commissioning, there has to be both favor of God and favor of man. If I'm walking in the favor of God, um, and God says I've called you. Well, this is I usually go. God says, I called you as a prophet, and I'm walking in the favor of God. Then I've received a private calling from God, and I have favor with God for that, and God will grow me in that. But until I have a public commissioning, so to speak, where I begin to walk in the favor of man, then I'm not, I'm, I'm a prophet to nobody. Okay, well, t- uh, talk to the flip side of that. Okay, so if I, it's good. I like that. We, we answer the question by looking at the opposite of it. Sorry, yeah, that's good. Um, because I wasn't sure how I was going to bring that out. So you, you look at someone who's been selected and promoted, but they, they have not built that history with God. Um, that tells me that you've, what you would have is you would have a person that's in the position but doesn't have the power. Okay. Because in private, you get the anointing. In public, it comes on display as you minister, as you... As you do those things, like Jesus said, when you go to the Father in secret, He'll reward you openly. You can't do that oppositely. You can't do that in an opposite way. I can't have someone promote me without having first having not been in the secret place, because then as I get up, what am, what am I giving out? Mm-hmm. I have nothing to give out. So you have to have to to operate in what God's called you to. You have to have both favor of God, and that, that's the 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 enablement, the anointing, things like that. But then you have to have the favor of man which gives you the opportunity to exercise that influence. Um, so can someone be elevated without, almost without, without God's favor on it or God's approval on it? Um, I think that can happen. Mm-hmm. I think that can happen. I don't want to, I don't want to say, so people who are really heavy on the sovereignty of God would have issue with what I just said. Because it seems as though we can do something that God didn't necessarily agree with, but we see that all through Scripture, people did stuff that God didn't agree with. So I think that someone can be elevated too early. Mm-hmm. We see that happen. And when they're elevated too early... Because of favor of man. Because of favor of man. but And they're not equipped along the way. Yes. Um, then that's setting that's a recipe for disaster. You're for setting, them. Setting, setting them up for failure. Yeah. So, what, so then what, what is... So favor is something that gives us an, an advantage. What is what is the favor of God then, and versus the favor of man here then? Like, so that that's we, a, that's the whole uh, that's the whole point I think of this discussion. And so I want to I want to throw out a question that I threw out to you the other day via text that we didn't really get to discuss. So Psalms five and twelve says, uh, "For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You surround him as with a shield." We've been born again into righteousness, and that apparently came with the favor of God. So, what's your thoughts on, is grace and favor synonymous? 
or is grace a starting point for favor, but there can be an abundance of favor? So, so here's what I, here's how I see favor. The Amorites, God's intentions towards the Amorites in the Old Testament. Because they were not in covenant with Yahweh, and they were doing things that, that, that was heinous, his intentions towards them were not good. Mm -hmm. Anything that God is, he's the, he's the most complete at whatever that is. So when it says that his intentions towards us, his thoughts towards us are good in this, it's, it's as good as anything can ever be. Like anything God does, it's always to the, to the fullest extent that it can ever be. So God's intentions towards the Amorites, towards the, 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 the Amalekites and these different tribes that were doing these terrible things, you know, they, they, weren't, they weren't good in the sense of, you're my people and I'm going to redeem you. Um, it, he chose Israel and he said, my thoughts and intentions towards you are good. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at favor as when God's intentions and thoughts and his entire being is focused to me for good, or focused to this thing for good, the Israelites, for instance. That's favor. But, let me answer the other Go part ahead. of the question. Mm -hmm. But Israel walking out the covenant and walking out the wisdom and the power of God is the grace that comes along with the favor. So, how does that look for us in the new covenant? And that... I didn't really get a chance to like break that example down a lot, so that that could be, that could be cleaned up significantly. But what does it look like for us as a new covenant? God never turns His intentions off towards me. Mm -hmm. God never turns His thoughts of good off towards me. So His I am I am in the favor of God in the sense of when God looks at me, He sees me in Christ and Christ in me. So. All of God's being is focused on me as good. Mm -hmm. That's favor. Mm -hmm. And that looks like something that, that, will, that will manifest in my life in different ways. But grace is the enablement to walk in that favor, to come alongside God and to, uh, to be his son and to minister alongside him in this kingdom and to see the kingdom of God cover the earth. Like, Favor is the intention, and grace is the enablement. That's the way I kind of see it. I think that's really good. But, but what's your thoughts on, do you think that maybe there's a certain amount of favor that we as Christians can kind of, I don't know how to say this, um, limit ourselves to? Because in the Bible we see favor upon those that really trust God and follow His leading, like we've been talking about, fearing the Lord, making Him Lord of their lives. Mm -hmm. And when God sees someone that He can trust, He pours out more of a limitless favor on them. You know, you see that with David, you see it with Moses, with Abraham, mm -hmm. you know, like that, in those situations, that's like a limitless favor because they followed after God and then God said, oh, I trust them, so I'm going to continue to give them favor. Yeah. So do you think as Christians now that Yes, we have a certain amount of, of favor, and grace helps us walk that out. But do you think we limit ourselves to favor by not fearing God and making Him Lord of our life? Since you know we're talking about lordship, and how does that how does lordship relate to favor? So I said it before the uh, when we talk about lordship that He's Lord whether we make Him Lord or not. Mm -hmm. He He is Lord. I can choose to bring myself under the influence of his lordship. Under the influence of his lordship, the fountain of favor covers me. Whether or not I'm under his lordship, the fountain of favor is still flowing. Does that make sense? So if I look at a waterfall, it does not matter if I'm under the waterfall or if I'm beside the waterfall, the waterfall is still flowing. It's a waterfall. If there's water, the waterfall is going to flow. I can choose to go stand under the waterfall and I can feel it come over me. I can feel the effects of it coming over me. Um, depending on what waterfall you go over, that might, that might not be a good idea, but you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying. His favor is always flowing. His intentions are always good towards me. And, and this is where meta, you know, these metaphors and things break down, but so we have to be careful with this. But it's always flowing, but it's always flowing under the umbrella of his lordship. Mm-hmm. 
when I choose to bring myself under the influence of his lordship, then what I'm choosing to do is I'm choosing to bring myself into his favor. So, so you can stand under that limitless flow or you can, or if I don't want to walk in uh, obedience yeah, and I don't, and don't want align to, yourself, don't align myself with his lordship. That's mm-hmm. a good way to put that. Don't align myself with his lordship. Then what happens is I'm not aligning myself with, I'm not aligning myself with the flow of favor. Yeah. Okay. So but if you, yeah, if you, I mean, like you said, you can, you can stand under that waterfall or you can go off to the side a little bit and you're just getting like the mist from it. That, that's, that is a good way to put it, but it, it, obedience is all or nothing. Mm. You're either obedient or you're not. Yeah. Okay. Like you, I can, we can, we can, we, it's a good way to explain it to, as the waterfall reference. If I can stand near it and I can feel the splash over me, um, but that would do a disservice to, to people who would hear that in the, in the sense if we just left it there. Because we would think that I can pick and choose what I'm going to, what I'm going to listen to him and I can still have a little bit of favor. Like if I'm, if, if I had this much favor in my life and it only required this much obedience, then that's okay. Now, we see the manifestation of God's favor in our life because it's his good in- intentions to draw us near. Right? He, he woos us and draws us near. Um, but if, but if I want to leave the, it's almost kind of like, in the way we're talking about this, I'm, I'm cautious about what I want to say this, but it's almost kind of like childish ways to look at it. Well, I'm just thinking like, uh, what? Well, yeah, okay. I'm, d- I'm just thinking like, what, where's the line between like a prosperity gospel and what you're talking about when it comes to favor? So prosperity gospel would say the, the, presence of material things in my life are the evidence the evidence that God's blessing is on my life and if I'm not blessed if I'm not prospering materialistically then I'm not blessed and there must be some sin or I'm just not believing that's kind of that was some of the air that the word of faith movement got in which um, you know did get corrected uh, somewhat but but it, where it's just, just like, if I even speak anything negative or I'm not speaking only positive things, then I'm not going to be blessed. And therefore, if there's not materialistic expression of that, then I'm not blessed. I'm not, then I'm not, I'm not prospering. So God does speak about, you will prosper and this will be a manifestation of my covenant with, with Israel. He does, I can't remember the exact verse, it's in Deuteronomy, but. Deuteronomy uh, twenty eight thirteen. The Lord shall make me the head, not the tail. Thou shall be above and not, not beneath. Yes, that's part of that whole, the whole chapter of blessings um and, and i mean in the jewish people even even now they have they have passed that down to their children like on the daily like they speak that over them and i mean mm-hmm. they're and they become very successful people in in the financial world even and so oh, yeah many in many areas of, of life yeah and that's and that's the stereotypical thing about about jewish people i'm not I'm not being derogatory when i say that but people people like to make jokes about about how successful you know like all the major industries are or ran by Jewish people. Well, there's a, there's a reason when you grow up having your, your parent uh, or the, you hear, you, know, you go to synagogue and you hear the, the uh, priest speak over you, like those blessings over you, that, that sh- literally shapes your mind. Like you, you can't help but grow up thinking I'm, I'm one of God's chosen people, mm-hmm. you know, that creates that just naturally speaking, like just let's apart from supernatural, just naturally speaking, that creates a mindset in you of almost being unstoppable. That, that's, that's the reason why there's a, many of the most incredible things in history that you see, um, you know, especially in the, in the in more modern history, like Jewish people are associated with those things. Mm-hmm. They were incredibly, they've been incredibly successful people, and they went through incredibly difficult hardship mm-hmm. in the midst of that, and they've been incredibly resilient. And it's because they've heard They've heard their parents, they've heard, you know, at synagogue, how blessed they are, how favored they are, how they're chosen. But that, is it enough to just hear it? it? It's not, because what they're seeing is they're seeing a, a natural expression, but, but because of that disconnect from the Messiah, um, it, it only goes so far. It's only going to go into this life. But, but that's the, God has so much more for them. You know, there's so much more than just being, walking in favor and blessing in this life with man and things like that. There's there's so much more than that. So with us as as Christians, mm-hmm. when we're talking about this, so 
yes, we can we can have favor with man. Yes, we can have an abundance of favor with God uh, if we align ourselves with him. So how do we marry those two to walk how Christ did when it says in going back to the original verse, Luke 2.52, where he grew in favor with God and man? How do you marry those two? Um, Jesus, this is a good one. Jesus stayed in Jerusalem when his parents left as a kid. Mm -hmm. And when they showed back up, they said, what have you been doing? Like, what, what, I'm paraphrasing here, but like, what are you, what are you doing, son? Like, we've been searching for you. We've we've been worried sick. And it, but it said that he was, he was about his father's business. But from that day forward, he came back and he was in subjection to his parents. That, that was what that was. He, he had, he had favor with his heavenly father and he was in the temple and he was going through these questions and answers with these scholars, but there had to be that subjection to his mom and dad. There had to be that, that growing up. There had to be that people in the community seeing something different about him that we grow in favor of man when we continue to do things every day, day in and day out with excellence and we do them with the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And you come under subjection to your leadership. Like you just said, he came under subjection to his parents. And, and, and I think that, yeah. Yeah. But I, that's, if somebody, if, if somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm, well, I've had, I've had people do this. I've had people come to me before and sit down and say, you know, I'm, I'm called to this ministry. And I'm like, that's great. That's fantastic. You know, tell me, tell me about that, that what you heard. But they weren't willing, and they did tell me about it, but they weren't willing to, to do anything. Like I, I asked, okay, so, so you, need, you need to be discipled in this. And yeah, yeah, okay, so we need to talk about what that looks like. Well, you know, when, you know, when, could, I, when, could, I, when could I speak? So we're, speaking is a half a percent of this. Mm-hmm. Being up behind the pulpit is half a percent of this, at, at most. Like, what are you doing? What are you already doing? How, what, what's happening in your life? Like, let's talk about, you know, how are you growing in the Word? How do you, well, you know, I, they didn't want to talk about that. It's mm -hmm. like, I just, I, I want to do the thing that God has told me I'm called to do. Well, I want you to do that. But as someone who's responsible to the Lord, because you, you came to me and you shared this and, 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 and I'm a leader here, like, well, how I have to, I have to make sure that I'm enabling you and equipping you and discipling you and, and listening to what the Holy Spirit's saying about you. So what does that look like? And sometimes people were just like, well, I don't want to do those things. Okay. Well, then there's nothing I can do because what I see is in, in Samuel, in the, in the book of Samuel, he raised up prophets in Israel and the, the school prophets, mm -hmm. and he taught them, and he trained them, and they were recognized as coming under him and learning from him, and we don't have a whole lot of information. We only what's what we can read and then what you would imply from what's said, but um, the point is is that whether it was Samuel, whether it was David in the field with the presence of God, whether it was Jesus with his parents and his community and, and with the Heavenly Father, like there has to be, it's almost like it's a proving it's like, a, it's like a, the, the favor of man is almost like a proving. Now, sometimes the, there's two different aspects to this, though, because sometimes there'll be situations where you, you, you don't have, you don't have a time for your reputation to go before you. You don't have time to build a connection with that person. And it will be God speaking into someone's heart and opening a door for you. That is the favor of God creating the favor of man. Mm -hmm. That's those supernatural situations where um, God tells me, I want you to go. I want you to go sit down and share it with this person. I want you to share the gospel with this person, and they've just been incredibly hard-hearted, but for some reason that day their heart was open to receive, and they gave me favor, and they and they didn't just shut me down. They listened to what I said. That is the favor of God acting upon the favor of man. Yeah, and I think the other part of that that you were trying to talk about with the favor of man is there has to be a, a trustworthiness that's seen and a genuineness that's seen and. I know you're calling it proving, but that's what I think about is they have to, they have to know that they can trust you, not just with the big things, but the small things. 
Yeah, and that's, that's the two, there's those two aspects, those two manifestations of it, I think. So to kind of like bring this together here, favor of God versus favor of man. I look at the favor of God as like, it's his good intentions towards me. And that looks like something. Maybe it's expressed in an open door. Maybe it's expressed in, in, some, in some kind of blessing, whatever it may be. But the favor of God is always flowing. It's just whether or not I want to come under where it's flowing. And it's always flowing under the Lordship of Christ. I come under the influence of the Lordship of Christ. I come under the influence of the favor of God. I have to have the favor of God and I have to have the favor of man to be effective in the kingdom in whatever calling, anointing that God, God put me in. But the favor of man will only, like you have to have both. Favor of man will only take me so far. If I have the favor of man but not the favor of God, then I may get positioned and promoted in a way that actually is destructive to me. Mm -hmm. If I have the favor of God and the favor of man's not there, then I don't, God's not opened that door for me to, to step into that or else God, maybe, maybe is that God is giving me time to grow and for me to be proven in the community mm -hmm. before I'm elevated. And that makes me think of, you know, Jesus's ministry. Like mm -hmm. when he's at the wedding, he was like, you know, woman, it's not my time yet yeah. because he had the, of course the favor of God, mm -hmm. but he knew like there was going to be, there was going to come a time where he would, would then have the favor of man when he stepped out into that. But it was just, he knew the timing of it. Yeah, and I think in that situation, it was he knew when he, when the favor of God began to look, when it, the favor of God began to manifest on his life, that it was going to create that favor of man door, and that was a door he wasn't going to be able to undo, mm -hmm. uh, uh, close. Like once, once he did that first miracle at Canaan, he stepped onto the path of the cross, and he knew that. He knew once I start this, I can't undo this, mm -hmm. and that was, and that 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 was really powerful in that moment. But we see. Um, we see situations in Scripture where people have the favor of God. So let's take uh, let's take Paul for instance. You know, Paul Paul went many places and didn't have favor, but then he went some places where he did have the favor of man. Whether it was supernaturally, you know, we we don't know about that in, as far as the the way the narrative reads with Luke the way he wrote, but we can we can imply in the Scripture that there's times when God's favor upon Paul's life created favor of man. For Paul. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the beginning in Acts when he came to the apostles and and they he was wanting to minister and they were like, mm, I mean, We don't know yet. Um, you're just killing our people, boss. So we don't really we, we don't trust you. He he had the favor of God on his life. Obviously he had this encounter with God, you know, on the road to Damascus and all these things, but he hadn't yet had the favor of man. Yeah. But he went away and he came back and then the apostles were like well, okay, yeah, okay, we but what was the key there? And this, I think, this goes back. I know we already talked about this once, but the importance of community. But Barnabas was the key there. Barnabas went to them and said, "Guys, I vouch for him. Like, I'm seeing what God's doing in his life. Like, he he's trustworthy." Yes, he and had favor with he Barnabas. had favor with Barnabas because Barnabas saw that he was trustworthy, and then Barnabas vouching for him yeah. brought the favor with everybody else. And then that's what catapulted his ministry. But if Barnabas wouldn't have vouched for him, I mean, there could be <laughs> there yeah. could have been a whole different story for Paul there, or it could have been delayed for a, a long period. If there wouldn't have been a Barnabas, we'd never had Paul. We'd mm -hmm. only had we'd only had the story of Saul. Mm -hmm. It would have never we've never got the part two without yeah. Barnabas. Um, had the revival not broke out with the prophets in Antioch, we'd never have Paul. Yeah. Now, Barnabas looked at that and said you know that guy who used to go bound and take our people to prison? Like, God's doing something up there, mm -hmm. and and I need him. Yeah. Um, and there's so much, there's so much deeper, so much more depth we could go with this, but the point is, is that I, I see the, you know, we kind of talked about the flow of the favor. Favor with God is something that, as I become more and more subjected. To, to the Lordship of Christ, and I grow in relationship with God. What I do is I'm I'm just positioning myself, and I'm to to see the manifestation of that favor in my life more and more and more through humility and through relationship and intimacy with God. And that's what we're talking about here. Come under His Lordship, and that favor can, in a moment, create favor with man. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's not the way the favor of man comes. Sometimes the way the favor of man comes is through time. Like when I when when I first started coming here, when we first started coming here, you know, to say we had favor with man in the sense of like, 
don't know, to minister. That wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. We just started coming here. We didn't know what we were doing. We were still trying to figure this whole thing out. But over time, the favor of God and the favor of man came together for the, for the intentions and the plans of God. That's what, I mean, that, that, going, you could take, the favor, take man and God off of this and just say favor. Favor from God's perspective is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's always for a purpose, yeah. you know. Uh, he's and it's when I say that some people are going to say, well, then if God blesses you with something and it's not for ministry, then it wasn't from God. Like that's not what I'm saying. Like God's it always comes with a purpose. Whether that purpose is to to show you how much you're cared about or to promote the plans of the kingdom, whatever it is, it, it, it God has purpose behind what He does. And sometimes that purpose is just how much He loves us and He just wants to show us that. But other times that, that, that favor, when it comes to ministry, that favor opens doors. That favor promotes us. But we have to have that favor of God and favor of man. Mm -hmm. yeah. have, has this been a, like, has this done a, have I done a good job breaking this down? I feel like I've been kind of all over the place. No, I, okay. my notes are kind of all over the place. I apologize. But I think, I think it was a good conversation. Yeah. Do you want to add anything else? Um, yeah, I, I think people get really... When we see talked about favor, we see Samuel and we see Jesus, and we see you a little tired over there. Sorry, Moves yawning too. He's getting me. Everybody's gonna start yawning in this room now. Mm -hmm. When we see Samuel, it's he's positioned in the temple, and then he grows and becomes the prophet of Israel, and none of his words fell to the ground, and people like shuddered whenever he came around. You know, Jesus. Jesus many times had the, he always had the favor of God and he grew in the favor of men but many times when you see Jesus go into places it didn't look like he had favor and at the end definitely he didn't have favor but that was that was for an intention so what does that look like then what does what does favor of man look like in Jesus's life What's the what's the manifestation of the favor of man in Jesus's life? I mean, I think we see that throughout his ministry, where he, I mean, he's going into places that that no one knows him. Okay. Or maybe that he doesn't even have access to, and he's able to minister there. Okay. In some places they ran him out though. Yeah. So some places he, some places the favor of God did not create the favor of man for Jesus, mm -hmm. and people resisted it. But other places, it did. They recognized what was on Jesus's life and who he was, and they accepted that, and it created favor with them. Yeah. There's more to this. I don't. I know we're running out of time for this, but the, like the, as we've been talking about this, it's just been because the, the presence of God. Hmm. Yeah, there's more. I think we're going to need to do it. We're going to need to do another episode on this at some point. Okay. Because there's more to this about, and it has to do with the presence. I, I can just, I'm just sensing kind of the Holy Spirit is kind of unpacking something in my mind right now. But like it has to do with his presence on our lives. Yeah, and there's a, a verse I was going to read here before we close, and it's Psalms 90, 17. It says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Um. Yeah, so the favor of God upon us looks like a manifestation of our of our lives, of our energy, mm -hmm. of our of our strength. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that because and I, and what I said at the beginning was only part of it. And I think I, I I did elaborate on that later on, but just to clarify, God's favor on us is His good intentions towards us, and they're always they're always flowing. Mm -hmm. But when we are under subjection to the Lordship of Christ, and we're in that flow the the manifestation of that favor will look like something in our lives. Mm -hmm. When I'm under the lordship of Jesus at my job, that means that looks like me doing things with excellence in a way that I can't do on my own. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that work of excellence creates opportunities and open doors in my employment, whether it's for God to, to move me into a position where he wants me to or to put me in a position where I have an audience with someone I normally wouldn't yeah. because they're in, they, they see what's on, going on in my life and they want to, they're interested to hear what I have to say. Um, I, excellence will open doors for you. 
all day long, all day long. And people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. People don't realize when they, 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 when, when you have to do stuff, you're actually not operating in the heart of God. You know, and, and there's, I think it, it, there's another component to that, not just doing things in excellence, because I think that's very important, but also doing things um, with excellence and, and not complaining. Yeah. Or not even being boastful about it. Like, there's a humility that comes with that, and there's and there's uh, a place of just gratitude of, of doing things with excellence. Mm -hmm. um, because you can do things with excellence while you're complaining. And you can do things with ec excellence by by taking credit for it, you know, loudly yeah. and everywhere you go. But that's not the type of excellence that we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, and it's really, it's, it's kind of difficult to tease out like the favor of man. Exactly. Because it's a, it's a hard subject. And, 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 you know, I know this conversation has been kind of everywhere, but it is like when you sit down and say, well, what is the favor of God versus favor of man? Like that's, that's not like a just black and white cold cut, here it is. Cold cut trio at Subway. That's right. That's good stuff. Um, so yeah. you kind of have to you have to piece together what the the scripture says about it, and then also your own experiences. But so then let's, uh, let's summarize this then. Go for it. So favor of God, I grow in favor with God in the secret place, mm -hmm. and, and trusting Him and, and making Him Lord of our lives. Yes, that's all. I'm, all that I'm gonna just kind of yes. sum it up, and as Jesus mm -hmm. said, in the secret place. Okay. So I grow in favor with God in the secret place. That's where I learn humility. That's where I learn what lordship is. That's where I, what I learn what friendship is, which we're going to talk about mm -hmm. in the next podcast. That's where I learn what, you know, to be like the one whom I love and I serve, whom I call Heavenly Father. I grow in God's favor there. But I, growing in man's favor can come through time in a community but it can also look like God supernaturally putting favor with man into someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, someone who, and we have we have a couple here in in, in our church that God is they're, they're they're doing the ministry, which is incredible. And I would I would say that what we're seeing in some of the situations with them is that there's favor of God there. And then we're seeing favor of man. Yeah. And what's happening is, is that in some of these situations, it's it's because of that time. Mm -hmm. Time built in the community. Time built with people seeing day in and day out their lives and their hearts and their testimony and coming alongside them. And that has created the favor of man. It didn't happen apart from the favor of God. Mm -hmm. it, it, came, it came as a fruit from it. But mm -hmm. then the other side yeah. of that is in the situations where God has supernaturally moved on their behalf through other people mm -hmm. who didn't know them, who uh, it was just, it was, they have no reason to do this thing. And God, God says, no, we're going to do this. And whatever it is, provision, whatever they need comes mm -hmm. from an, in an unlikely way, in an unlikely amount from an unlikely place. It's like it was accelerated by, by yes. that favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, that would be, I would say that's the favor of God override. Or that would be the favor of God coming upon people in creating the favor of man in them. Yeah. And therefore, th they look at those people and say, we want to come alongside them, even though we don't know anything about what they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we've heard some just really kind of like unprecedented testimonies from their, from their, uh, maybe we have them on sometime to talk about it. That'd be great. They would love yeah. that. They actually, they're listeners. Yeah. So, uh, but I would say that we see the favor of God in their lives. Oh, yeah. And then we see the favor of man in one manifestation, which is, like I said, what they've done in the community, the, the, the ties they've built. These things. And that's also been accelerated. And that's also been accelerated. Mm -hmm. And then you see the favor of man as in these situations where God, he, it's almost like he just, he turns the hearts of the people. And, that, and I mentioned that before, like when, when God turns the hearts to give an advantage for a purpose, like that's, that's him exercising his favor upon someone's heart, which therefore creates favor, you know, with you and them, um, which is pretty neat. You know, I couldn't hear these stories about like, People get an open door to go minister somewhere, and it's like, why? Why should this door have ever? Why would this door should have never opened to me, but it did? And it's like that's the favor of God, creating favor of man in that moment supernaturally because this is a moment which God says has to happen now, and we're doing it. So we definitely yeah. need to have them on and talk about just servanthood and obedience and open doors. That, yeah. I, I mean, I just named the podcast right there. 
Yeah. Okay. I am right there. All right. Where'd you get, we're going to get them all. We're going to get them all. We'll have to do that. All right. That was good. Favor of God, favor of man. And it all has to do with being under the Lordship of Christ because that's where the favor is flowing all the time. And it's, and obedience is all or nothing. Lordship is all or nothing. He's either Lord or he's not. I can walk in favor or I cannot. But if he has said that I'm, if he tells me, you know, Joseph, I've called you to this. And I say, great. I can't wait to see it happen. And I don't walk in obedience to him. I don't walk under influence of his lordship. Then how can I ever expect to grow in this thing that he's spoken in my life? This, this whatever ministry, whatever it may be that he's spoken over me. Like, I think a lot of times people who say, I have a call in my life. But I, but it's been years and I've just not seen anything from it. Many times, those, those situations are because that secret place never happens, yeah. sadly. I'm not, not trying to like cast stones here, but that, that's, if I'm spending time with him, I'm going to grow in favor with him. He's going to teach me. He's going to disciple me. He's going to, to, to grow me and position me and do these things. But some people, they won't come under the obedience and for some people, it could be as simple as God said, I want you to stop doing this. This isn't good for you. And they refused to. And what that did was set them on a path to rebellion. And then years later, they're going, years later, they're saying, well, God called me to this, but he didn't do anything. And it's like, he, he, he said one, one thing back here that was incredibly simple and you didn't like it and you chose not to obey it and you therefore rebelled against it. And this is why this has happened. It's not because God didn't want to... To you to see the favor and to see the growth and see whatever it may be, it's that your heart wasn't in the right way, right position. And I, and I experienced that. Like there was different times in my life where I realized, okay, hey, I'm not, I'm not walking in obedience to this. I need to, I got to change and reposition because if I'm not walking in obedience, I'm not walking in, in His lordship. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, I see you give me that look of we gotta, we gotta wrap this up. I'm giving you that look that if you don't get Moo coffee, he's gonna fall over into his laptop. So we gotta wrap it up. All right. All right. You got anything else to add? No. Okay. All right. Well, do we decide <laughs> Jesus said or Jesus says? What's the poll? Because I, uh, since we started, it's been said. Yeah. It's been said. Okay. I, I we're think gonna you're just going to have to keep it. Okay. Go do what Jesus said. <laughs>